guys, so next month is November, otherwise known as non-fiction November. This is a sort of month-long readathon that was started by two booktubers who I will of course link down below and would absolutely highly recommend that you check out. And the title's pretty self-explanatory. It is basically a readathon that is to encourage you to read more non-fiction than you normally do. So if you never read non-fiction, then to read a non-fiction if you can. If you read one a month, then maybe try for two a month. And there are also four different challenges to just sort of help guide your picks or just give you places to start or challenges if, you, if you're somebody that is inspired and driven by goals then they're always handy and I've tried to pick books that fit into those four challenges for my TBR. I've mentioned a few times recently how much I'm enjoying reading more non-fiction so I thought this challenge just came at the perfect time for me but this video is not just a TBR. The way I've seen a few different people do this is that not only do they let you know the book they plan on reading to fit with each challenge but also recommend you a book that would fit with each challenge in case you're looking for some inspiration and aren't sure where to start so that's what I'm going to do. I hope you enjoy this video but without further ado let's get into the books shall we? So the first category is new and actually the <laughs> next three categories after this I feel like all four of my books could fit into apart from new. This was the one I struggled with the most from the selection of books I had to pick from and wanted to read but I did realise that this book that I'm about to show you came out in 2015 and my edition is from 2016 so it's reasonably new. I was going to put it in the important section but like I said I'm pretty sure all of my other books will happily fit into any of the sections so this is my new book and it is The Joy of Tax by Richard Murphy. This was in a TBR recently actually because I've already started it. I started reading on the train when I was moving down to London and I'm about 60 pages in and it's just under 300 pages. Naturally I got distracted by other things and haven't gone back to it but I was really enjoying what I read. It's a really easy read so far so I do want to get back into it and I think this is the perfect month. Uh, you can pretty much gather from the title what it's about. It's about taxation. The subtitle is how a fair tax system can create a better society. So I don't think I can really summarise it better than that. It's obviously just Richard Murphy exploring that topic. Uh, the bit that I've read so far was kind of a history of tax and a definition of what tax is and, and where it stems from. And I haven't surpassed that yet so I haven't really got into the nitty gritty of the book but I am excited to. For new though I wanted to recommend Walls Come Tumbling Down by Daniel Rachel. I learnt about this book only two months ago, it only came out about two months ago. As soon as I did learn about it though I was in love with the concept and not only that but the concept has been executed so well. This is an oral history and funnily enough when I was watching one of the creators of this readathon's videos she was talking about one of her choices being an oral history. That's what Daniel Rachel's book is and it's an oral history through interviews with different people who participated in political music movements in the 1970s, 80s and 90s. Starting with Rock Against Racism which was a massive campaign collaboratively between musicians, entertainers, politicians and political activists to come together to uh, obviously fight racism which was really amazing and from that a lot of other political music movements were inspired and, and music was very much part of the political scene of those decades and it's a really inspiring and impressive feat of literature and period of recent history and uh, something I would highly recommend to everyone. It is very focused on Britain but I think you can learn a lot from it no matter where you live. The next category is controversial and as my friend Jen pointed out in her video, controversial doesn't necessarily need to mean uh, that this subject should be controversial. In fact, a lot of the times, controversial topics really shouldn't be controversial. So my putting a book in this category, I do want to point out, does not mean I think it's controversial. Uh, but it can be treated such. And the book I've picked for this one is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. And this is Essays and Speeches by Audre Lorde. And there's two reasons I picked this one. Firstly, because it deals with multiple issues that are still somewhat controversial in certain circles, which includes women's rights, gay rights, 
and black rights. And secondly, because Audre Lorde was born in the 1930s, has direct experience with prejudice for all of these issues and particular because when she's writing and the majority of her life was a period of great change and uh, campaigning in these issues which were then even more controversial I guess. So that's why I've picked this one to read. I hear amazing things about Audre Lorde. She was the Poet Laureate in New York I believe so pretty high praise there and I'm just hoping I'll love this one. And for my recommendation I'm going to pick one that I actually just finished and that is Who Rules the World by Noam Chomsky. This is Noam Chomsky's most recent collection or uh, published work I believe and it, it felt like a collection of essays tied together by a central theme and I've picked this one as controversial because it is critical of a government and that seems to be a controversial topic and this book is a discussion of the United States government and essentially they're quite violent abuse of power in foreign affairs and interaction with other countries, cultures, continents, you name it. <laughs> this was my first full work of Noam Chomsky and I really enjoyed it, it was really fascinating, there was a lot going on in there and it wasn't a huge book that it was a lot to wrap your mind around but it was a fantastic book and, and Noam Chomsky is an incredible intellectual and I think his work's very important so yeah that's what I'm going to recommend to you. And category three is important. Now <laughs> like I said super easy to fit things into important and I have found it very difficult to pick a recommendation for this one simply because of the multitude that I could have picked from but from what I'm reading I have picked Redefining Realness by Janet Mock. Now I was planning on reading this anyway it is the pick for the Feminist Orchestra Book Club in November but it is incredibly important for many reasons and one of them being the fact that it is about a trans woman and we still have such a long 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 way to go on trans rights and it's really important that more people are educated about them including myself and Janet Mock is a trans woman and this book is about her journey and her work as a trans rights activist. But for recommendations, like I said, there were tons to pick from and I've decided to go back to one that I come back to time and time again because it feels like the most authentic answer to this question and that is Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates. This was actually the Feminist Orchestra read for this month, October, but I had previously read it in January or February of this year and it had such an impact on me. In fact it was the book that really pushed me to even bother starting a feminist book club because it was amazing. It was harrowing and touching and heartbreaking and inspirational and invigorating and all of the adjectives. <laughs> I would highly recommend everybody read this book. It is about everyday sexism towards women predominantly. It can't cover everything so yes it is predominantly towards women and it stems all the way from tiny comments by family members on the jobs daughters can do or catcalling in the street all the way to people having experienced uh, years of sexual abuse and it takes all of those together uh, through testimonies from that people have submitted to the Everyday Sexism Project which is run by Laura Bates uh, which collects together experiences of sexism and analyses them all together and I just cannot advise you all to read it more. Finally, uh, category four is fascinating. Now this one's hard for a TBR because I find it hard to know if a book's fascinating until I've read it, but I can pick a topic that I think is fascinating and that is Asata Shakur's autobiography. Now when I'm doing this video it's still the 22nd of October and I do plan on starting this in the next few days, but it's quite a chunker. It's just under 400 pages and quite dense, so I'm imagining it's going to take me a couple of weeks to read it, so I'll still be reading it in November. And like I said, it's the autobiography of Asata Shakur, who was on the FBI's most wanted list for a long time. Uh, she was accused of being a terrorist, when in fact she was a black rights activist, and uh, she was being targeted and couldn't live in the US, I believe. So really, really important 
definitely fits into the fascinating category and I, I think this one's going to be really, really good. But for fascinating, I've gone for something that's based in history, but it's a little bit more than that. And that is The Honour Code, How Moral Revolutions Happen by Kwame Anthony Appiah. And this book is certainly fascinating. I flew through this one. It was so interesting and fascinating and I would highly recommend it. It's got a lot going in there and its structure really keeps you hooked because it's divided into uh, four different main topics. And all of these topics are historical honour codes that were changed. So it takes examples like foot binding in China, it takes duelling in the upper classes, it takes transatlantic slavery, and then it takes the honour killing of women in modern culture. And the first three it obviously looks at in the context of how those went from being honourable practices to being frowned upon, and in the last one it looks at the ways in which this is considered by some an honourable practice in some cultures and needs to be changed and tries to reflect back on the way the honour codes were changed in previous historical societies to see how we can change things in modern society. Sounds kind of confusing but it's actually really easy to read but full of really interesting information and definitely gives you a lot of food for thought and also introduced me to some historical cultural practices that I wasn't that familiar with, in particular Chinese foot binding which I knew about but not in detail. So I found that really really interesting and I think a lot of you would find this book interesting because there's so much in there and so many different topics are explored that it's got a little bit for everybody. I'd love to know if you're participating in a non-fiction November, even if it's just to read one non-fiction book, do let me know. If you have any recommendations for me, please let me know. Love more non-fiction recommendations. And if you plan on checking out any of the books I've mentioned in this video, then also I'd love to hear from you. But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!